All right, so I'll go ahead and get started here. So this session is social in your site, the Drupal way. Uh, I've given this session one other time at another camp, and it was uh, previously called the right way. Um, but I've been told that it might be a little bit arrogant, so tone it down a little bit. So my name is Kevin Champion, um, web developer, uh, independent contractor. Uh, and for the last little, little over a year, about 13 months, I've worked uh, almost exclusively with a company in Vancouver called ImageX Media. Um, they're a web shop um, like so many others here. I've been doing almost exclusively Drupal work for the last three and a half, almost four years now. So uh, this talk is, uh, is about something very specific. So this is not uh, social in your site. Uh, I don't mean that to say I'm going to talk about all things having to do with social. I'm going to talk about one specific thing, uh, and that is social content into your site. So I'm not talking about social sharing from your site. I'm not talking about you know, uh, like buttons and um, syndicating your content that you're building in your Drupal site to these social media services. I'm talking about a one-way operation, getting site content from social media services into your site so that you can do things with it. Um, the main focus and the orienting framework to the talk is uh, sort of a, uh, a decision-making process of how to address this problem that I was presented with and um, how to do it in a way that I think is well-architected and uh, avoids a lot of the pitfalls that we end up running into. Um, this is an uh, intermediate talk, so I'm not going to shy away from some of the more advanced concepts uh, within Drupal, but uh, most of you here probably have a pretty good skill set and knowledge base at this point, so um, just a word of warning. So this is what I'm talking about. Uh, this is um, a website that has uh, a tweet and a couple of Facebook posts, and they're displaying it on their homepage. Okay, that's, that's it, just like really simple concept. Uh, there's not much more to it, uh, it's very easy. Uh, so we should wrap it up here in about three minutes and you guys can be on your way. Okay, so this is, this is the problem that I was given. So I was given this mock-up here. This is the extent of the information I had about this feature to work with. So as you can see, um, this is uh, you know, a, a wireframes of sorts, so you have what looks like a tweet on the top, you have a YouTube video here, and then a Facebook post on the bottom. Um, we can make some assumptions about what these are. Um, we could assume that this has been curated, that the content administrators of the site selected those particular items to put them there. We could also assume that maybe it's um, the most recent item from the social, social services. Um, I wasn't given any details, so I couldn't decide one or the other. Um, so I was more in a situation, well, how could I handle both of those scenarios and potentially a lot of other scenarios. So as a developer in Drupal, you're told, and it's not just you're told, um, you know that there are you know, thousands of modules out there. So the first thing you're thinking when you get a spec and you get a problem space is say, you know, there's a module for that, right? So you go find the module, you go look for it. Um, you may already be aware of one. Uh, and also when you work in a firm uh, or for a web shop or even providing client services on your own, there's a ton of pressure to do things extremely efficiently. That's the promise that we were able to sell with Drupal, to be able to provide built-in solutions that have already been developed that you didn't have to re-architect and create yourself. So you're always sort of first step going looking for a module. So on the right, it, you can't tell, but this is a list, and this isn't even a full list. This is just a snapshot of like one page result of modules that have something to do with Facebook. Okay? And when I went through those, for Facebook in this case, I didn't find any of them that sort of correctly honed in and satisfied my use case. None of them really, all of them either did too much or too little. All of them did something that they did like three things instead of one. A lot of them have to do with logging in through Facebook or um, using Facebook, uh, using the other way around, so taking content from your Drupal site and posting it to Facebook. Um, and a lot of them are sort of poorly developed or not supported or sort of one-off implementations that somebody threw up there and they're sort of languishing. So part of my you know, takeaways for you all is I hope uh, to inspire you not always to think that there's a model for that, because sometimes uh, it's better to not think that way. So when I step, take a step, step back, I realize there's no module for this. Um, even if I found one for Facebook, I'm still dealing with Twitter, YouTube, uh, Pinterest, who knows? I actually didn't know how many different social services they're going to want. And I also know that new social services are cropping up all the time. So this is a common problem. So down the road a year from now, I wanted to provide a solution that that client could add a new social service with minimal uh, development effort, with minimal uh, pain on their end. So uh, I take a step back and say, okay, there's not a module to solve this for me. Uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of digging and have to you know, think through the problem. 
So the first, if you're just thinking about this, like I said, this is simple, right? These are just these items. They're text usually, sometimes images. And you're getting them from this source. Um, and so, and the sources are, these are social sites, right? They are professionals in getting you to take the content that you give them and put it elsewhere. It's supposed to be viral, it's supposed to be spread. So they give you embed tags, right? You can go in there and grab some code and embed it in your site. And it's great, it works wonderfully. So you look at that and you're like, okay, you know, how does that work then? So we say, maybe this is just a manual process, right? Maybe the content administrators, they gotta go to Twitter, find the tweet that they wanna do, grab the embed code, paste it into a node or a block or another structure, in Drupal structure, and then put it in their site and that's it, right? Maybe I don't need to develop anything. But there's a ton of, there's a ton of, as you know, there's a ton of problem. That's a huge headache for the actual content administrators, so that's a ton of work. Them having to actually go out and realize that there's a new tweet and go grab it and put it in their site. Um, but also, and more importantly, as the developer and the person who's gonna be responsible for responding to the client and claiming that their site is slow, I can't control what's going on with this. And as the themer or the designer of the site, I can't control what this is gonna look like. Okay, this is usually gonna be an iframe. I can't really get into that iframe. I can't modify it. There's some things I can do, but I'm not gonna have the type of control that I wanna have. So this just doesn't work for me. Uh, if you embed an iframe from another service, uh, it, you can easily have a situation where that can bring your site down if that service goes down. And then there's also just the extern external HTTP requests um, that are gonna ping your site and it's gonna hurt, hurt performance overall. So clearly, um, you know, this isn't quite as simple as it maybe seemed at first. So after deciding that there's not a module for it, and I'm not just gonna provide some solution of embedding an individual social media item, take a step back and sort of try to, you know, architect out you know, what's going on here, what is the problem here? And I distilled it down into three, you know, common steps, which is not really unique to this problem. These are common steps, right? So we have a simple thing going on. We have to retrieve something from an outside source. We have to store it. Uh, in our Drupal site, and then we're gonna render it, okay? Um, so those three steps, like I said, common type of situation, but it's not so easy because I'm finding out immediately that there's all these problems with different ways of approaching this. So uh, in thinking through it, there's a couple principles that I immediately came up with or immediately were impacting me when I was imagining the nightmare scenarios I'll have down the road, dealing with performance, dealing with uh, client image, content administrator feedback. So I wanted to provide a solution that provided maximal control Okay, so the ability to control the theming output, for instance, of these social media items, the ability to control and um, not negatively impact performance as, as much as I could. Um, I didn't want to provide a one-off solution. So many of the modules that you'll find out there, Facebook modules, um, YouTube modules, they're sort of one-off solutions that don't actually take a step back, look at the problem space, and architect something sound. Um, I wanted to provide an extensible, extensible framework. So like I just described, um, so many uh, situations can and will arise, I would anticipate with any client, that a new social service crops up and they're gonna need to add that to their site. So if I'm taking a step back and looking at the problem, I should probably think through that and maybe try to provide something to support that. Not just that, but if you think about any site that you may uh, be involved with or ones that you visit, um, there's a high degree of likelihood that the client may actually have more than one account, for instance, at a certain social service that they wanna bring content into their site, okay? so. The use case for this was a university, Indiana State University. Um, that was the client that provided the, the wireframe and that was the problem space. So in their case, this is a university, top level university site. They are gonna have literally hundreds of different social media entities that they're gonna need to bring into their site. So anticipating that and providing an extensible framework that can support that. Um, so not forgetting Drupal, what I mean by this is building, since we're building this in Drupal, we need to use Drupal uh, all the tools that make Drupal unique and excellent and harness its greatest capabilities to provide a solution that's seamless rather than one-off and separate. Um, and sort of as part of that, you know, the Drupal way of doing things. So control, extend, harness. So from that, a little bit more work in the planning phase. Um, there's uh, basically a matrix. We have three different operations that we're trying to perform, retrieve, store, and render. And then we have three principles I'm trying to sort of achieve. Knock off. So in the retrieval phase, I want control over how that content is being retrieved and maybe at what interval. I may want to set it up so that it's automatically being imported into the site so I don't have to do any manual triggers. Um, I want to be able to extend that, like we already discussed, a new social service, a new account on an existing social service. And then I want to harness Drupal somehow, if I can, to use Drupal tools to retrieve that content. So I don't necessarily need to build my own way of going out and grabbing content externally. I can use Drupal's tools. 
Uh, same deal with store, okay? So in storing the content, I want control over how that content is stored. I want to be able to extend it. So think about um, someone before the talk started brought up the fact that, you know, these social services, their APIs change from time to time, okay? That's a given fact. That's going to happen. So the way that content is stored needs to be extensible in the sense that I need to be able to accommodate the new API. And it, the more I can plan out that, you know, from the get-go, provide a supporting framework for that, the easier and more seamless it's going to be to support that change when it happens. And then lastly, to harness Drupal. So I don't want to create my own data store. I want to use Drupal's APIs. Um, and then the render phase. So the render phase is, um, like I already discussed, there's performance issues with embedding an iframe with an external source, for instance. Um, so I want to be able to control how that content's rendered. I want to be able to extend that. So um, I want to be able to own that content and be able to use Drupal's tools to do advanced things with it. Like I already described, there's a couple different scenarios that the wireframe provided. Um, and they may have content from a lot of different social services, and they may want to do interesting things like provide a listing of the latest piece of social uh, media from each one of the services across the site. They may want to have more advanced logic about that. They may want to provide you know, two YouTube posts and three Twitter posts, and they want them to be no more than you know, two days old, and you know, there could be all sorts of rules. So that needs to be able to be extended, and then we obviously have to use Drupal uh, to render it, and we want to use those tools. So, so we have the problem space. That's our goal. That's what I'm trying to achieve with this. And um, I already presented sort of the first fallback, which is like you have the embed code. You could just embed that in your site. That doesn't work. So the second approach is, um, is perfectly exemplified by the Twitter module. So the Twitter module is uh, the Twitter module because it's uh, a really good effort um, sponsored by Acquia. It's a really well written uh, and architected module in its own right. So the Twitter module allows you to do a whole bunch of things, one of which is it provides uh, integration with OAuth so that you connect to Twitter and pull content from Twitter and import it to your site. It even has its own cron, and uh, I don't know if it does any batching, but it has its own cron function to help you set up a daemon to automatically import content into the site. It does this sort of in its own way, so it uses custom retrieval. Uh, it stores the content, it has, creates two database tables, uh, defined with uh, the database schema and its all install file, which is good, that's the Drupal way. Um, but it's pulling that content and storing them into its own tables, right? Its own custom tables of its own design that don't necessarily have a structure that relates to Drupal in any way, besides using the API to, to build those tables. And then lastly, uh, custom rendering. So, um, it provides its own implementation of how it's going to render these tweets if you decide to display them. Twitter actually does this well. Um, they integrate with, uh, they, in the module, it's hard-coded integration with views so that you can actually access those, that tweet data with views. So it seems like it's, good. it's a good solution. Uh, it's, it ticks off a number of the sort of requirements here. Um, like I described, uh, it provides the control that we're looking for in terms of retrieval. Uh, in terms of storage and in terms of rendering. So we have, we have the control we want. We got the content from the source. We're able to pull it in. We have control. We can set up the daemon so it automatically import that content. Um, and then we, like I said, they written, have written in the module support for views so that data is exposed. We can use um, Drupal's rendering capabilities. Uh, so that's great. Um, however, uh, this is just a module for Twitter. This doesn't support any other social media service. It does support uh, adding two tweets. Twitter accounts, so that's great. So it's extendable in that way. Um, but it's not gonna satisfy my requirement, which is to provide, sort of take a step back even from one social service and provide a solution for all of them and any potential new ones. And then lastly, uh, like I just described, it doesn't fully harness uh, in the retrieval and the storage uh, Drupal in the way that it does things. Like I said, it uses the database API to store the content, but it does it in its own structure, right? And Drupal actually, has done a lot of work in creating its own data structures to store content in. So uh, that's the space and the different sort of ways in which I thought about it before digging in um, to try to come up with a better solution. I have my sort of ideas of what that looks like with this matrix, and now I'm going to describe that. So the first thing is I'm going to start with storage because when you're developing, you have to figure out the place that the stuff's going to be stored in before you can actually grab the stuff to store it in the place. Um, so, uh, for storage, I'm um, going to use the excellent entity API, which is what I was just describing. Uh, Drupal has created and done a lot of work creating um, its own data storage structures, right? So, 
Uh, using entities and using the entity API, it's possible to create your own entity type um, so that you can store content in your own um, of your own of your own design, right? You can describe the nature of that content, and then you can create your own entity type. So, for those not familiar, um, you know, a node is an entity, uh, an entity type, um, and there's a lot of other things that are entity types or can be in Drupal. For instance, if you have the file entity module installed, files individual files can be entities. But entity is meant to describe this generic uh, structure, and this is really really important because when you get things into Drupal as entities, they integrate with the rest of Drupal out of the box. You don't have to do the extra custom integration in your own module. So just looking at it from the top down, the way that your users end up looking at this, it doesn't make any difference to them how it's stored. Uh, but there is you know, this vague concept of uh, the content administrator experience. Um, for a lot of us who are developing, our users are actually not the end users of the site. Our users are the content administrators. We're sort of this step removed. And their experience, if they have, if we're automatically importing you know, social content as nodes, their node interface is gonna be mucked up with all of this content that they didn't write, that they don't know where it came from, and it's gonna lead to an ex you know, more confusing experience. And then from a little bit more technical angle, uh, they're problematic. it's problematic to pull that in as a node because a node comes with its built-in fields that describe that type of content in the database structure, and we don't need those, okay? So we need data and the structure that's specific to social content. So uh, this just shows um, what this looks like for those not familiar. So everyone's familiar with the content, you know, the content administrator page, which lists nodes for you. Um, by creating an extra entity type, I have a new tab now. It's called generically social. Um, and this lists social media content, okay? So these, this is content that's come from the social services and stored in Drupal as its own entity type. Improves that content administrator experience by putting that tab out of the way um, and giving it its own place in the site. So um, we have custom entities that we're using. These custom entities, like I said, automatically integrate with the rest of Drupal. So they're fieldable out of the box. That means that we can extend the definition of any, any individual uh, social media type in this instance. Normally you would have content types. You would design a new content type, you'd add fields to it. Um, same thing, Drupal 7 enables this because it makes a lot of, it, well, the Entity API enables this because it's fieldable. So we can create social media types. We can have one for each different social media service. And then we can field that. Okay, so this is what I was talking about earlier. If the Twitter API changes, and all of a sudden they're passing additional data to us through that API, we can just simply go in and add some fields to the Twitter uh, uh, social media type through adding fields, and it, it's very simple. So that integration happens with um, fields, and it's extensible in that way, but it happens in a lot of other um, ways as well, which I'll talk about. So the second step, we covered source. The second step is using feeds. So feeds isn't Drupal core, NC API isn't Drupal core at this point either, but feeds is a proven Drupal contrib. It's been around for a long time. Um, it, it does what it does, and it does it very well. Um, there are problems with it, like everything, and you could use more support and more effort, um, but it's, like I said, proven, it's useful. So it helps us in a number of ways. It handles mapping, so it allows us to grab the source and map the data that's coming from the source to specific fields that we have in Drupal that we've set up with our entity. Um, and then it provides a, a good import daemon to to be able to pull that data in behind the scenes so we don't need to think about it. So you set it running, and uh, you're all probably familiar, it's gonna grab the source data if you tell it to, if you configure it to, and import that into the site. So uh, Seeds module, one of the reasons why it's a good contrib is because it's well written and it has a modular architecture. There's basically three main aspects to Feeds module. It provides fetchers, parsers, and processors. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. The fetchers actually retrieve the data. The parsers take that data and you know, transform it into a structure that you may need it into. And then the processors take the transformed data and store it into your Drupal site. Um, so that's what feeds enables with its modular architecture. And when we think about the problem space, right, we have a few problems that we have to be concerned with about grabbing social content. So we have to worry about authentication. Uh, a lot of data sources don't require it, but Facebook, Twitter, even just basic public access to, pu to publicly available data in Facebook requires an authentication step to get to use Facebook's API. Same deal with um, same deal with Twitter. 
Um, so we have to deal with authentication somehow. We, because this data is not necessarily going to have a one-to-one -one correlate with our source, we might have to modify it somehow. So we may need to, um, if it's a YouTube video, we may need to take an ID somehow and store that in a way uh, that communicates that you know, we're going to use that ID to retrieve an embed code later. Um, a better example, uh, Pinterest. I don't actually know if it has an API now, but for the longest time it didn't have an API, and when I wrote this it didn't have an API. So the only thing we had exposure to was an RSS feed. Uh, so there's a, certain amount of, there's a certain amount of parsing of actual RSS fields uh, that I needed to do in order to grab as much data from that RSS feed as I could. So, um, and then the last thing, uh, last problem that it helps us solve is storage. So this is just uh, showing you what these things look like uh, when you use the feeds admin UI. Um, these are the three different components, fetchers, uh, parsers, and processors. And you can see here what we can do, because it's well written, we can, use, uh, we can override classes and add our own custom parsers, fetchers, and processors. And the, all this is showing you is that there are, um, you can't see it because the resolution is horrible, but there's custom ones that we've added there. So we've added on to the feeds the way that um, it's structured. Uh, so that we can select, um, for instance, as a parser, we can grab the, uh, the, uh, you know, the Instagram parser or the Twitter parser that we're able to go ahead and override to do what we want it to do. So, and then lastly, we have uh, the rendering phase. We already talked about storage. We talked about um, retrieving the data. And then we have the rendering. Rendering is not something we even need to address. Drupal is really good at this. Uh, it's a powerhouse. Um, it's getting better at it. It'll be great in Drupal 8, uh, but it provides all these really robust and useful tools. Uh, these are the things that Drupal site builders are accustomed to using. These are things that you teach your content administrators and you pass off the site to use. So basically, uh, we can just rely on all of those things, and this is because we provided the integration by doing things the Drupal way. So grabbing the content, using feeds, storing it as entities, exposes it to each one of these different things. We won't even have to worry about writing our own uh, integration with that, like the Twitter module has to write. We set up that entity and we have that data exposed in views. We have it in, uh, the views can create blocks. Um, we can uh, add our own view modes. We can use it in panels and templates. So this is the final design. So uh, again, pretty simple. Uh, we have our retrieval step. We're gonna use feeds for that. We have our storage step. We're gonna use a social entity, custom entity that we're gonna create. And then the last one, we're gonna render it however we want to. And uh, for the purpose of this, I'm not all that concerned about that. So this is the, uh, I guess, the taking a step back, trying to architect something well to handle this use case, this scenario that says we need to be able to control extend and harness, and we need to do that at each different step in the process of this sort of general simple problem, the retrieval, the storage, and the rendering phases. So the end result of this implementation it is as described. Um, this is the actual, you know, uh, Indiana State homepage website, and you'll see here it's just um, they have a block which is centered on their homepage, which displays the latest tweet, the latest, I guess that's Instagram, and the latest Facebook post. Um, they, they we have have it set up so that they're pulling in, um, basically just defining what accounts from each one of these different services they want to get data from, and they're pulling all that content in. It's happening in feeds behind the scenes. It's not only happening to pull it in, it's keeping it in sync too, which is, for those familiar with feeds, is one of the options that we have to try to keep that data in sync with its source. So if they go change, if they make a typo on a Facebook post and they go change it, they change some other information, um, the next time that cron runs that and feeds goes and grabs that data, it'll sync it with the social entity that it has so that data stays up to date on their, um, on their, home, on their home page. And then you can use additional advanced tools, which I won't touch on here, to uh, sort of get more control over when that content is retrieved, at what interval. Um, it's retrieved using um, Elijah Cron is, uh, is probably the most used tool for that. Each one of those was just the most recent one? Yeah, in this case it you is. You couldn't do anything with it, just their tool chain. That's right, in their use case. Mm -hmm. But what, I, what, what this design provides you is that you have the data. So, if you use views, you can think of any number of ways you could display this data. You could have your own page that just displayed one, you know, one li a listing of the latest tweets. You could you could mix and match the data with whatever way you can imagine, with the constraints of what the data provides you, right? So, uh, for instance, you know, if you're 
if you're just going to embed a tweet, um, then you can uh, have a, you'll have a certain amount of data about that. But when you expose the API, we actually store are able to store in the site all of the data about that, so we can look at that data and figure out whatever ways we want to render it. And that's where it comes into Drupal's rendering. So with those layer. three so the views, you just said you just show one. Yeah, in that case, it's just they're each it's actually three different blocks, and it's just saying, give me, give me, uh, you know, give me all the tweets, and and I only want one, and I want to sort it by the most recent. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit. Let's see, where are we on time? We started at, what, 4.30? Okay, so we got plenty of time. All right, so I'm gonna do a little demo of what this actually looks like. So this, uh, you know, this is the overview of the problem area and solution. Um, feel free at this point to jump in, you know, ask questions. Uh, if you need further uh, explanation or you wanna see more code, um, you can definitely do that. So. This is, um, I'm just going to walk you through what this looks like in an actual live site. So this is, uh, if, for those familiar with feeds, this is uh, what the feeds import page looks like if you have set up any importers uh, using feeds. Uh, the admin side of this page um, looks, uh, let's see, am I in the right place? Yeah, something like this. So you can go in there and you can, uh, in feeds, you can go in there and add your own importers and set them up. And by creating a custom fetcher parser and processor uh, in order to handle this, one of the options that we have is we can go in and select those and use the settings that they provide. So this is the Facebook, um, let's see, I probably need to zoom in here. So this is the Facebook um, importer, and you'll see we have a Facebook page fetcher, uh, which is custom implementation, and, okay, get down. There we go. and then we have the Facebook page parser, again, uh, custom implementation, and then uh, social processor, and the social processor is actually one that only needs to be done once because we're storing this as so a social, a generic social entity. So any content coming from a social source, we can use the social processor for. Um, in other cases, we actually, I didn't need to use, uh, create a custom fetcher and parser. It just depends on what the data source is like. Okay, so when I have Facebook, I have an API, and there's a bunch of data coming into it. Um, the data is coming in a certain shape, and um, I think in this case. Um, I may be grabbing that actually as JSON data, and I'm using uh, overriding, uh, I think it's the JSON feeds um, fetcher module or something to that effect. Um, so grabbing that and using it and overriding that. Um, so that's what the feeds looks like. Then you have your importers over here. So your importers, we have one for each, um, in this case, we have one for each social media type. Um, if I go into the Facebook one, uh, it's set up, uh, or I set it up uh, using the fetcher that you just, all you have to do is enter in a, a username for a Facebook profile. So this is just um, the Facebook uh, page name for uh, this Drupal camp. And I just enter it in and then I hit import. And I don't know if this will actually work given the internet and live demoing. But you run the import and it imports it. Um, like I said, you know. If you know feeds, you already know this, but there's a daemon running behind the scenes on cron runs to grab this data periodically. You can customize how that comes in. Okay, so we've got the feeds part, so we're retrieving that data and storing it into a social item. So like I showed in the screenshots, you have your content, your just basic content page, and we have an additional social tab over here. Uh, this is in order to display social entities. Um, because we've created our own implementation of these entities, uh, this is actually just a view. Um, so I wrote the view for the admin thing and then provide it with the module. So this is just a table like you would see anywhere else um, displaying the different content. And you know, right now there's just a simple thing where you can select the different social type and then view it. So if we wanted to see the Facebook items that were just imported into the site, we can see them here. Um, we can go in and click on them. So just like if you're importing it as a node, they all have their own unique pages, their own ID numbers. Um, and they have their own data coming in. Uh, you'll see we are able to pull in an image along with a bunch of other data. I don't think the I've I don't think there's probably missing data here that I'm not displaying. Um, one handy thing about using feeds is that you get um, other bonuses because it's a proven contrib and lots of people use it and have used it. There's lots of add-on modules. So like I described, uh, I was using JSON instead of um, XML, for instance, to grab the data. So someone has created a JSON, generic JSON fetcher, so I don't have to rewrite that. Also. Uh, if you use the media suite of modules and you use file entities, um, I can act we can actually set it up um, with the media feeds integration to import 
the actual content, um, any media-based content from that's coming from these sources as file entities. So that means that this photo that's displaying can be can come into the site as a file entity, uh, which means that it's also abstract and generic and properly using Drupal's, all Drupal's tools. So then, you know, one of the side effects of this is that a uh, content administrator down the road can go create a node, maybe they're a news article, and the, they may have the media interface where they can pull that up and grab this photo that came in because we're storing it in a generic way. They have that to select later on. And it's not just photos. We do this. Um, uh, I didn't have a chance to make sure it's working here um, before the presentation, but uh, the way that it works on the Indiana State University website is we were able to pull in actual uh, YouTube videos um, as file entities so that we can then go grab those file entities and do whatever we want down the road. So, for instance, like, I mean, how many scenarios can you imagine where, uh, you know, some content administrator is writing an article and they're, like, basically just writing an article that's, like, boilerplate, here's a new video we created on our YouTube channel, right? So they can then go grab that from the media interface. They don't have to worry about grabbing the embed code. And then, additionally, and this is sort of getting off track, but when you're using entities like media entities, you, we can then track, Drupal is aware of those media entities, we can track exactly where they're used and what nodes or other entities they've been imported, and we can count their usage to see how many times they've been used across the site, things like that. So that's an individual item. Uh, uh, you can come over here and see, just like you would have, like I described, you could set up content types. Uh, we set up a, a structure to have social media types. So zoom in here again so this looks just like all the stuff you're familiar with it's just that it's its own implementation of it so the code on this is actually modeled a lot after just the node module um, and how it sets up it actually requires two different entities so it requires an, a social entity and a social type entity so the social type handles the content types for instance each individual one and then the social entity handles individual social items um, so this allows us to create to create this interface where we can go add a new social media type. So I don't know what's your social media service, you know, du jour, uh, WhatsApp or any any other social media service down the road. You can add it here. You can then go in and use the same interface you're accustomed to with content types to manage the field structure of it. And that's basically allowing us to expose this admin interface to help us define our data structure so that I can do this with writing minimal amounts of code. So come in here add a social media type for a new social service, figure out what's coming through the API, what data is coming in there, add the appropriate fields and the appropriate field types, and then I can go in and create my feeds, uh, my new feeds importer, map those fields to their, from their source to their, um, to their destination, and then you know hit the run button, and we're off to the races. Um, so uh, we can just, just to prove the point, uh, you've probably seen lots of this before, um, since entities, custom entities, aren't exactly the newest thing. Uh, but we can come in here and just like on content types, we have our managed fields into interface, we can add fields, um, and then this helps in a lot of ways. So the Twitter module, for instance, I was describing, it creates two custom tables. Um, this is going to use, the, it's fieldable, so it's going to use the field API and how it stores, decides to store data. Um, and then we just basically, from the development perspective and the administration perspective, we don't need to worry about that. We can let Drupal's, you know, well-designed and architected solutions handle that, or in theory, well-designed and architected, right? So um, just to show you, um, uh, just a couple hours ago, I did set up these importers and ran an import. So this is uh, just showing the same type of impl implementation. And again, this is just like the latest tweet and latest Facebook post, latest Instagram, latest YouTube video. I haven't messed with the view mode and the file type setting, so it, but it's not, YouTube's not displaying an embedded video, but it would uh, if you just configured it to do so. Um, and then, like I said, you can use views. You have access to all of the data, so you can slice it and dice it however you want and display it in whatever way you want. Uh, the, last time, the last time I presented this idea and this implementation, someone came up and talked to me about how this was good for them because what they were trying to do was create um, a, basically a Drupal site that was going to import and aggregate content across their university for all of their social media platforms so that they could control that content and understand what content is being used across their entire web presence, get oversight on that, and then I, I can't remember what other ideas they had, but they was part of fueling a product. So they wanted to be able to do analysis on the content. So because we're exposed to the APIs, we can get stuff like uh, you know Facebook likes and views and uh, retweets on tweets and things like that. We get those that data. So you could use that to fuel your own analytics platform if you wanted to try to you know 
I guess, reinvent the wheel on that one because there's definitely social services out there that, that provide that for you. So that's sort of what it looks like uh, in the admin interface. Uh, it's very familiar and uh, what you would expect. And then um, in terms of the code, uh, basically the way this is set up is there is a, a base module, which um, I think uh, in this case it's called social, this social. Okay, so that's the name of the module. The, this base module provides the generic uh, stuff needed for this solution across the board. So uh, what's generic to the solution across the board uh, that's not specific to an individual social service is the entity, the two entities that we create. So the social entity and the social type entity. Um, and also, like I described, it's the social processor. So the custom implementation of the, of the feeds uh, data processor that will take the data and store it as a social entity. So that's all it does and it's pretty simple. So for those uh, you know haven't done this before, there's hook social or there's hook entity info, which is the info you know hook that defines creating your own entity type. Um, it's a big uh, info array that you create to define what should be there. Um, you uh, you you know you create labels, you create callbacks for various operations if if you want to, if you want to override the defaults. So creating a callback for um, rendering the label. Um, for rendering the path to the actual, so the end canonical path that's going to be there. So like we have node slash one is the canonical path for nodes, just configuring that for um, for this entity type. Deciding things like whether or not this entity type is going to be fieldable, um, whether we're going to use that. For instance, there, like I said, there's two entities here. So the social entity is not fieldable. It doesn't need to be fieldable. The social type entity needs to be fieldable. Social type defines the container. Um, and then setting up, um, get, telling Drupal and the NTA API about uh, different aspects about the entity. So things like what are the unique fields that um, we're going to store for all social entities, right? And in this case, it's totally generic. Like we don't, it's going to be different for each social service, but all social services are going to have a unique ID number of some sort. We don't know what that number is going to look like, how long it's going to be, whether it's going to be have characters in it or just numbers, uh, but it's going to have an ID. Um, we don't need to use notes. We don't need to, you know, create a body field and have that be default. We don't need uh, authorship. We don't need timestamps, um, although the, this uh, provides the timestamp. So hook uh, NC info uh, defines it. Uh, when I was creating this, it was um, not painless. You know, it was a lot of going around and seeing different implementations of custom entities, seeing the different modules that do this already. So file entity, um, there's the bean module, which provides its own entity its own entity implementations. Uh, there's an example in the examples module. And then like I said, a lot of it was actually just looking at the actual node, the actual node module itself and modeling certain things after that. So most of this is set up to be uh, um, object oriented. Um, the module that I created is sort of a grab bag of uh, object oriented and procedural. So it actually needs work um, to be uh, better written, I would say. Um, but as we proceed through the file, it's basically all of these callbacks that we define in the Entity API, um, defining what these different aspects should be. So that's what the, uh, the implementation of the custom entity looks like. And then if you go into, um, uh, where is it? Yeah, in plugins, so we have our social processor, which integrates with feeds. So the social processor is just uh, extending the class and um, we're saying that uh, we're going to extend, uh, we're going to save this stuff as the social, as social content. So as the social entity type that's already been created. And again, this is pretty simple stuff. You just go grab and you can copy the existing social, the existing processor class and modify it to suit your needs. In this case, it's very little modification that's needed because what what's being done here is not that much different than what's being done in, in something like um, the known module. So, that's the, the top level. Um, I showed you the admin interface, so there are some views in here uh, in this top level module that provide just a simple view to list all the social items. Um, and those uh, items have uh, fields in them to delete that social item or to edit it um, to link to its actual uh, canonical page. Um, and those are provided there in the top level as well. Um, and then uh, there are just, a, there's a series now of, um, in, order, in, in order to make this truly extendable, um, the way that I architected the module, I guess, is to, art, is to have sub-modules inside of it that are implementations of each different social service. So there is a folder here for importers. Um, there's face, you know, there's all the different importers that we created uh, for this. And um, each one of those does different things. It depends on the nature of that data. 
Uh, Facebook needs some helper functions to help us authenticate to Facebook. Um, that's code that most, for the most part, I think, uh, was cribbed uh, finding examples of just um, at using PHP to access the Facebook API. Um, some of it may have come from other Facebook modules. Um, so creating some utilities there to handle that. And then the important part is its own plugins directory, um, which has the Facebook page parser and the Facebook page fetcher, which are, again, this hooking into feeds module and providing our own versions of that. So we can grab the data and transform it if we need to in order, in the event that we need to, in order to store it as a social entity and make the most use of it in our site. So those look, again, they're just class, class extensions. Um, depending on the source, this may be a little bit tricky, so um, you may need to go, uh, you, depending on what, you know, like I described the Pinterest, it all only has an RSS feed, so it's cumbersome, there's not much data there, and it's a little bit more difficult to work with. Uh, Facebook and Twitter are both good, but the idea here is that actually when you set up one of these importers for new social service, anyone who uses this suite of models down the road benefits from that, they don't need to create their own. All right, and so the idea behind this as in terms of potentially making this into something that's released uh, as a contrib to the wild is to provide the main ones, right? Provide a good implementation of the main ones um, as their own importer modules and you'd enable them as you as you wanted to need to use them. Um, and then lastly, uh, and I don't, probably don't need to go into this much, but uh, there's a, a helper module here that just uh, has a feature in it, I think. Yeah, it has a feature in it to just create some um, blocks and provide some minimal theming uh, and provide some some views that create those blocks um, to help, again, get from zero to something useful really quickly. And lastly, um, there's one other feature, which is the, um, the actual social importer. Um, and this is, I guess, um, a feature in the sense that it just provides the generic importers that I showed here on the feeds admin interface. So uh, where am I? Yep, here. So this just provides a generic implementation of a Facebook importer, an Instagram importer, a Pinterest importer, and a YouTube importer. And some of the things that require or needed to have these custom fetchers and parsers was just handling the authentication, basically. So I'm trying to make it simple for content administrators by, like I showed with the Facebook one, just being able to put in a username there, not having to worry about any ID numbers or uh, there's with Facebook, like I said, any even any public data you have to actually authenticate to the API. So there's actually a non-trivial step that you have to do to, in order to go determine uh, what the key ID number and other information you need in order to connect to the Facebook API to get that data down the, down the line. So. Um, yeah, so that's the main thing. So, like I said, we can go more into how this looks in case there's any confusing bits. And also, um, we can look at the code more uh, if necessary. Um, but with that, I'll just wrap it up and uh, ask for questions. So, there is a... Uh, I've been showing you real code. Um, these are my credentials. But down here below, um, you'll see two links. Um, I have a GitHub project up for this um, in case you want to take a look at it and potentially... Um, use it for your own purposes, but hopefully also contribute back. Um, and then there's a sandbox, pro sandbox project also up um, on my Drupal project. But uh, this is something that I described uh, as a start, it was a project a year ago, and I created an implementation about nine months ago. And it works, and it works well, it's in production, um, and it's being used on a number of other client sites now, but um, haven't had a chance to look at it since. So uh, there's no ongoing work as of this point, but I would definitely welcome any work if anyone wanted to use it and clean it up and uh, and help out and I would be able to help out as well. So, questions? Yep. You actually kind of touched on uh, sort of what I was going to ask in your last uh, statement. If you haven't worked on it in a few months, how do you deal with breaking changes like the Twitter API change from 1 to 1.1 where it was hard to interrupt something? Yeah. Uh, you just subscribe to a lot of uh, dev updates. I mean, unfortunately, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're in the community and you're paying a lot, really close attention, then maybe you're aware. Hey, this is happening. This might impact what I'm doing. You may want to do research ahead of time. It depends on your level, of your tolerance for failure, right? If you need to prevent situations like that, then yeah, you need to be you know ear to the ground. Subscribe. I'm sure there's update you know update uh, notifications you can subscribe subscribe to for each of the services you're using. I would hope. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, and I think for most instances, it's just going to stop working. It's going to stop working kind of behind the scenes. Someone's going to eventually notice that, hey, this, I did a tweet and it hasn't updated in five days. And this actually happened on the ISU website. 
Uh, it, has, it happened a couple of times. One, one because of an API change, and another times because I like I had one t at one time configured the wrong, like an updated date on instead of a published date, right? So they were expecting one thing and they got another. So yeah, there's no there's no clear cut solution. Um, with the Twitter one, there's a little secret here. I ran out of time to create, to write the Twitter implementation myself. So I'm actually sort of, since the Twitter module is pretty good and it provides hooks, I'm just hooking into tw the Twitter module. So you actually have to go configure the Twitter module. But in, in theory, that would, if, you know, if this was actively being worked on, I would like to remove that dependency. So. Yeah, just wondering, we've been using the, I think, TB social mm -hmm. module. It mm -hmm. just has a lot of, it, it basically has this up hacking Words. I, don't like that. I was just wondering if it was, you know, better way to manage this update because definitely gotten that call. Hey, why is our Instagram showing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's just, it's got, I mean, even like with the, la the last major Twitter API change, it was, it happened and a bunch of people are complaining in the issue queues, but Twitter in Aquas, you know, they probably had a client project that they set it up for. They were actually working with Twitter directly, I think. And uh, it took it took a while. There was a bunch of people who came up with their own solutions, and it took a while before any uh, the the fix was actually committed, even though it would have affected everyone who was trying to use that module. So yeah, that was that was something we had to switch to the end end for a while. Just, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Other questions? Good deal. Well, uh, yeah, so check out the module. Uh, I hope that it may be useful to you in your use case. And I think more importantly for me. Uh, it's this kind of thinking that I encourage the, you know, uh, so I lead a lot of projects and I work with a lot of other developers, so it's this kind of thinking that I try to encourage them uh, to be thinking of when they're approaching problems because a lot of times um, the, you know, there's a module for that type of attitude, grabbing something that works but isn't actually solving the problem, doing it sort of sideways, um, doesn't help us in the long run on projects because we end up spending more time working on the hack and fixing it down the right down the road than sort of planning it out and using what Drupal does best. And sort of, if we're gonna use Drupal, then we should use the things that it's best at. And then making your solution sort of fit into that. So that's what, that's the takeaway for me. And then uh, you guys got the speech before, but uh, free drinks at uh, Jimmy Green's, Three Box South, and Pantheon's buying. So. Thanks a lot, guys.